Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Heather and today we're going to be starting the April book club reading vlog that I always do. I'm in three book clubs. I'm in the Literary Dead Book Club, Literary, Literally Dead Book Club, that's the hardest thing for me to say, the book troupe and also Ravished by Romance. So we're starting April. If you've never seen one of these videos before, I just read the books. You see me throughout the week or two weeks or however long it takes me to do this video and read the books and I put a little bit of my life into these videos too. So hopefully you enjoy. But the book picks for April, I'm going to start with this one. This is Murder Road by Simone St. James. This is the one that I'm most excited about because I love Simone St. James books. Every book that I've ever read by her has been a four star or above and I'm really hoping that this one is going to be the same because this one is about April and Eddie and they take a wrong turn and come across this woman or this person that's on the side of the road and they're all bloody and everything. They take this person to the police station and they did not know that, but that road that they turned on is notorious for finding like dead bodies being, dead bodies being there and people being um, killed on that road. And the police have been trying to figure out who it is, but there's also supposed to be a paranormal twist, which there always is in most St. James books. So these two people become the main suspects because the police don't have anyone else to look into. So they're trying to figure out who the actual person is that's killing all these people before they get ar like arrested or like convicted of that crime. So I'm really excited about this. Again, Simone St. James usually does not let me down, so I'm really hoping that this one doesn't let me down either. And that's for the book troop. I don't know if I mentioned that. Then the next one is Night Watching, and I'm really excited about this one too. I believe that this is a debut book for this author. Could be completely wrong about that. Could be wrong, but this is the Literary Dead Book Club. So I said it right that time. Pick for April, and I'm very excited about this. This is about a mom who is at home alone with her two children and somebody breaks in so they run to their safe room and she's just trying to survive while watching this person go through her house. And being a mom with two small children, this one kind of freaks me out a little bit already, but excited to still read it because I have been being let down with some horror slash thriller books that I've been reading lately. So. Hopefully this one will live up to the name or live up to the hype, whatever, you know what I'm saying. And then the Ravished by Romance book club has not announced their pick for April, so I'm still waiting on that. Hopefully they announce it soon, but just want to let you know that that's what this video is all about and I'm very excited to jump into it and I hope that you were excited to watch this video, but let's get to reading. Hello, finally here to update you, let you know that I'm halfway through Murder Road by Simone St. James and in true Simone St. James fashion, you jump right into the story 
everything that's in the synopsis of this book happens like in the first chapter you have april and her new husband eddie they get lost on this road in this very very small town because they're on their way to their honeymoon and eddie accidentally takes the wrong turn and ends up on this road that everybody calls murder road because hitchhikers young people get murdered on this road and no one knows what happens to them besides they just find bodies on this road so everyone avoids it at all costs except you know people who travel in the small town that don't know about it but the locals do not go down this road whatsoever especially at night everyone like i said tries to avoid it and when eddie and april are on this road lost they come across this hitch hitchhiker and ask her to get in their car and when she does finally she admits that she's in trouble basically and she's bleeding really really bad so april and Eddie take her to the hospital and she ends up dying. And that all happens like in the first chapter pretty much. There are some there are some different things in the first chapter too that are probably surprise you. They surprised me. But that's basically the premise of this book and April and Eddie are trying to figure out what happened to the girl or what happened what happened to the girl specifically as well as what happened to all of these other people that have died. There's a paranormal twist in here too, just like in all of Simone St. James's books, which I really like. But yeah, it's it's a wild ride. It jumped right into it and there's a lot of action and just the whole atmosphere of this book is terrifying, especially because it's a small town. And the young people in this town want to know what happened. Like, they want to know what's going on because they are the targets for whoever this killer is. They're thinking it's a, they're thinking it's a serial killer. And these killings have been happening since the 70s in basically the same fashion. And these, these young people want to know, but the cops can't figure it out. But there was something that happened to Eddie and April in this book. And it was... It was terrifying and I was reading it at night and it was dark and quiet in the house and all that kind of stuff and it happened and I was like mm -hmm. like it freaked me out freaked me out but that's one thing that I love about some of St. James's books is that they are very very suspenseful and while you're reading it you're immersed into the book at least I am and yeah it's just it's, it's wild right now but the cops in here they're just they're typical cops in books they just want to really get down to the bottom of it they're trying to frame april and eddie but something happens and you know april and eddie are just trying to figure out what's going on in the town and yeah that's what's that's what's happening in this book uh hopefully we'll be able to finish it tonight if not tomorrow so i will let you know how i feel about the rest of this book i also started stranger sessions by Lauren Beale. This is the Rav Ravish, by Ro Ravish by Romance book. They just announced it and it's a novella. So it's pretty short. It's only like 156 pages or something like that. But this is about this girl named Mariah and this guy named Dell. Dell just got out of a relationship. His significant other cheated on him so he's very down and out. And then you have Maria who doesn't have luck with relationships either. So they go to this thing called a stranger session where strangers go to this photo shoot and they don't know each other at all. The photographer just puts them together based on their looks and personalities because they have to fill out like an interest survey and stuff. And Del and Maria go through this photo shoot. They are instantly attracted to one another, like straight up instantly attracted. And that's that whole scene with them doing the pictures that was a good scene like it was hot it was steamy and hot and I was all for it and then this weird thing happens where Dell turns into a stalker and stalks Maria I have no idea why like it was it was all steamy and hot and sexy and then it just turned into that and I'm like what's going on and he does something with her moisturizer that just kind of grossed me out a little bit but there's also another stalker that's stalking Maria, so she knows that she's being stalked. But she kind of likes it too because she has like a fantasy and everything about it. Like a kink, basically. 
So it's just it's just weird. Like it took a you know it took a weird turn, you know. I don't know if I like it or not, but I'm halfway through it. It's pretty quick, but yeah, I just wanted to fill you in on that because it is that one's a little weird. I don't know. I don't know if I like it. This is my first book by Lauren Beal, and I don't know. I'm not really sure. I hear that she's like a really good author and has like really good books and stuff like that, but okay. When I finish it, I'll let you know that. <laughs> so, finished this book, and I ended up giving it four stars, just like any other Simone St. James books. I flew through this book. I loved it. I really enjoyed the pace of this book. I enjoyed, what are their names? It's been a while since I've read this. April and Eddie, I enjoyed their characters. I liked that they went and tried to solve the mystery because the police weren't doing anything about all the murdered people on this specific road. Like they were trying to solve it, but they could never solve it. But there's something about Eddie and April that the main ghost on this highway is calling to them in some way and like the like the local town mystery or whatever is she's calling to them in some way and just through all of their trial and errors trying to figure it out they finally do figure it out and i liked the way the story ended i did see the twist coming from a mile away though and it did get kind of slow at parts and there was just some parts in here that i didn't think that were relevant to the story but i can't tell you those because i'll ruin the book but anyways i liked this if you're looking for a good psychological thriller maybe uh one okay maybe not psychological suspense if you're looking through for a good suspense thriller that has a paranormal aspect to it kind of kind of horror-y in some ways. Pick this up because I think you would really like it. Loved this book. Four stars. The next book that I ended up finishing was Stranger Session. Now this is... I, I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know if romance novellas or short romance novellas specifically are for me anymore. They used to be, and I used to eat them up, but this one is a lot of the reason why I don't like to read them anymore, because I like some sort of relationship development, and I thought this book was going to have it, because it started out so good. So we have Maria, or Mariah, I can't remember, I think it's Maria, maybe. I mean, if it's not Maria, it's Mariah because the H at the end. Anyways, we have her and we have Del. And they are single and they decide to do this stranger session photo shoot where they go to this place they've never met before. They don't know what each other looks like. They don't know each other's names. The photographer picks who they are going to be partnered up with. And in the photos, they have to pretend like they are a couple. So I loved that aspect of the book. I absolutely loved that. And I loved the actual meet cute that they had and like how they and how they reacted to one another because they were instantly attracted to one another. And those scenes were so freaking sexy. Like they were so sexy. And I usually do not say that about romance books very often. But they were hot. Like, I was like, oh yes. If the book continues this way, then I'm good to go. But then it just went, it went downhill. It went downhill. There were two stalkers in this book. Del has like a straight up obsession with her. And she has some secret kinks going on. Which, no, not kink shaming at all. But there is one scene in this book where Mariah was, or Maria, Mariah was not conscious. And even though she gave his consent, I did not like that scene whatsoever. That is something that I do not like to read in my romances. Even if she said yes when she was awake, unconsciousness is not okay, in my opinion. Don't care. I don't care. Nope. Nope. And that just totally threw me off of the book all the way. And I did not like that at all. 
but I did like how protective Del was of Maria, Mariah, however you say her name. And yeah, so there's that, 2.5 stars. If he would not have redeemed himself at the end, I would have given it a two star. But like I said, he was very protective of her and he did come out and he was the knight in shining armor that she needed at the very end. So yeah, but yeah, okay. And I'm still reading, and I did not bring it in here. I'm still reading Night Watching. That one's taken me a little bit to get through because we had some family stuff come up and I had to take a break from reading for a couple of days. So I will I'll continue reading that, but just wanted to fill you in, okay. Excuse the way I sound, excuse the way I look. That's not the point, but I wanted to apologize ahead of time because I know I sound stuffy, because I am stuffy. And I know, whatever. Anyways, I wanted to let you know, I am halfway through this book, a little over halfway now. I couldn't stop myself last night because it got really, really good. So I can say, it's already May and I'm not even finished with this yet because this book started out super slow. And for a suspense book, I like them to be very fast paced. This is more of a literary suspense and I had to get used to the writing style in this. I didn't, I still don't really like the writing style of this, but now that the story is picking up and we're not just in a closet for a hundred pages, it's gotten very, very fast paced. It's gotten creepy. It's gotten a little bit to the point where do you trust the mom? Like what really happened? to the mom as she was growing up. She's, she went through a lot of trauma when she was a child. She's trying to be a really good mother to her kids. And she doesn't do things the way that you want her to do. Like the way she makes, she doesn't make very good decisions. We know that she's not making a, de a good decision, but to be a mom of two young children right now as well. I can see why she made the decisions that she does because, you know, kids are kind of unpredictable, especially in scary situations. And she's just trying to save her kids and trying to keep them calm and just trying to survive while this person is in her house. And she doesn't know why he's there, but when she realizes who he is, she like really kicks it into gear and I would have too. And you also get these flashbacks to her childhood, flashbacks to her marriage, and all this kind of stuff. And there was one scene in here where I wanted to smack the dad so hard because he was oblivious to what this dude was saying to their daughter and to how he was treating their daughter. And I just wanted to smack him because I would have done the same thing that she did in that situation. I'd have probably been a little bit more vocal about it too. Because if anybody gets close to my kids, I'm like, back up. I don't know you. I don't know who you are. Get away from my children. So I have no problem saying that. But I understand people who are kind of reluctant to say something. Especially people who do not like confrontation. I'm one that when it comes to my children, I don't really care. But I do understand where people come from when they don't say anything. Because, you know, people, you don't know, you don't know what people are going to do these days. And I can totally understand why she did not do that but when she kicked it into high gear y'all she kicked it into high gear and just the way that you see her marriage and how it was I I get I get it and there's a lot of victim blaming in this book too the way that the cops handled the situation as well wanted to smack them as well because sometimes, sorry y'all, but sometimes men are just oblivious to these type of things and they don't think the way women have to think these days. And that's what this book is about. But I'm really enjoying it now because it was very, very slow for like the first hundred pages. But then when she, like I said, when she kicked it into the high gear, y'all, she kicked it into the high gear and she was getting it. So I'm excited to see what is going to happen with the rest of the story and how the rest of the story is going to go. And again, the author's writing is not my favorite, but the story itself is is interesting. It's very interesting. And yeah, hopefully I'll finish it tonight. That's my plan anyways. And then I'll update you on the rest of how I feel. But so far, now that it's a little over halfway, I'm enjoying it. And I'm ready to see how the story is going to wrap up. 
So yeah, that's my update. Also, I just realized that I had food in my teeth that entire time, and I apologize if you saw the food, but I'm not re, not refilming that. That's just the kind of day that it is. I'm not refilming it. So if you saw food in my teeth, sorry. Hello. I finished this book, but before we get into my final thoughts on this book, I wanted to show you something because I ordered a sweatshirt to show support for one of the book clubs and I also ordered another one that's supposed to be coming soon but I went ahead and ordered this pink tie-dye. Look how pretty it is. For the Literary Day Book Club. This thing is huge. What size did I order? I only ordered a medium. This thing's big. So it's super pretty and it's tie-dye and it has the logo on it. I just wanted to show support for the book club because, you know, it, it's a fun book club and it was pretty, this is really pretty. This is really soft too. Ooh, the inside's really soft. Anyways, so I wanted to show you that, show you that, that I bought that. And I also wanted to end this and talk to you about my final thoughts on this book. I gave this book a 4.25 stars. She hasn't been petty because it wasn't a 4.5, but it wasn't of just a four. So I'm going in between. I thought that this book was rather slow at the beginning, which I've already said. Um, it took me a little bit to get into this book after the 150 page mark. I was into it. It was action packed. It had a lot of things going on in it. The mystery behind who the corner person was, was very intriguing to me. And this book, this situation can happen to anyone. And being a single mom with two kids is being a mom with two young kids in the middle of the night and somebody like coming into your home is terrifying and all the decisions that she made they weren't the right ones in that moment but being in her situation i can understand why she made the decisions that she did especially after the 150 page mark when she realized who the person was and she just wanted to you know try to save her kids and i understand why she did it but i don't know if i would have done it in that situation but then again, it was snowing outside, it was real cold, like all of these things were going on and she, her one thing was to get help to save her kids. And then after, you know, the situation de-escalated and she got help from the police, they didn't believe her. So she was being told that she was making up all this stuff and that she was lying and she was being gaslit and everything, which... Was really hard to read and I know that that happens a lot too people are gaslighted every day especially if it's an if it's an off-the-wall thing that happened and the woman or whoever mostly women in this situation are telling the story they're not all the time believed which I think is horrible yes people do lie about these situations but a lot of people do tell the truth and even if it's far-fetched you just need to listen to the victims, okay? Listen to them. And that's a lot of the, that was a lot of the thing in here. A lot of the things in here. The sergeant, he, I don't know. He had his suspicions about her anyways because of something that previously happened that he, that he was on the case for. But he just had this mentality about him that she was lying and anytime she wanted to talk to her kids, he would get really irritated with her even though knowing her father-in-law is the way that he is in the background of her father-in-law and her and he was just kind of dismissive of her and his partner the young cop he didn't know the backstory of it but he wanted to appease his superior you know so he kind of went along with his sergeant instead of helping her and i liked one of the scenes at the very end when he was speaking to the mom and the mom just like straight up told him exactly how she felt and I loved that so much. I love that she found her voice because she is a very shy, introverted, small woman and they just thought of her as like a damsel in distress and she's going through a lot of traumatic things. She went through a really traumatic childhood that translated into her marriage because of the way that her husband treated her and yeah she 
she she just had it rough and in the end she was a complete fighter and she didn't even know that she had it in her so i really like that aspect too but i thought that this was a very well rounded book even though the writing style and i didn't really get along all that well but the overall story in general and the overall characters they were very realistic this stuff happens every day and people need to listen to the victims more that's all i'm gonna say so that's the end of this video i hope that you enjoyed this video if you've read any of these books if you agree with me if you disagree with me let me know down in the comments and i will see you on the next video bye